And that's really what it is for the Steam Deck, is that the Steam Deck just allows stuff that isn't possible elsewhere. Hello and welcome back to another episode of While I'm Driving in the MX-5. What I thought I'd talk about is my general opinion of the Steam Deck. I've had it for two and a half weeks. Well, basically, I've had it for three weeks now. Just coming up to three weeks. Just under, just under three weeks with the Steam Deck. And I always rate it at the price point for the entry device. There are three Steam Decks you can buy. Mine is actually the most expensive one. I just chose that because if I'm going to be using it for the channel, may as well test out all the functions. But on a basic level, you can get the same spec with just smaller storage and a slightly different piece of glass on the front. And it will perform and play games at the same speed, even if you buy the base model. So I'm always thinking about that 399 price point and what I'm getting out of it. Now, the Nintendo Switch has exclusive Nintendo games. It also has the Joy-Cons. It's also a very polished product. At the start, there were a few things that were iffy and, you know, Joy-Con drift. I'm never really sure if they've ever fixed that. Definitely, they've hit the right mark with their demographic, you know. Kids want to play Splatoon. They don't need a gaming PC to play Splatoon. But we're here to talk about the Steam Deck. And the Steam Deck is not a polished product. It's impressive and I think it looks cool because I owned a Game Gear back in the day. It's basically the same size screen as what you get on the OLED switch, which is a $350 device. The Steam Deck costs $50 more and it's less polished. Now, the reason is that in order to get games to run, Windows games to run on a Linux-based device and also a company that, although I'm sure they have a lot of money from selling games on Steam, they're not that versed in the art of hardware. As we know, products from Valve just come and go. It's like the Valve Index, they finally made their own VR headset, but we've got, it's kind of like radio silence as to what's happening with that product. The Steam Deck can do stuff that the Switch can't, and that is the main draw. The screen is not as nice as the OLED Switch, it is not as flexible with controllers. You can't pull the D-pad off and replace it with a D-pad that you prefer. But in exchange, you can play thousands of games that are available on Steam. And yes, Nintendo Switch has got a large range of, a large library of games that's built up since it came out in what, 2017, I believe. So it's been a little while. Switch has built up some stuff, but the Steam library is hard to beat because they're not selling it at Steam Deck prices. Basically, you buy games on Steam, the, way, the same place that you play your PC games, at the same prices. Often, Steam sell games, you get games for like $1.99 or $3.99 or $0.50. Cents. It's like you can get some really cheap games on the Steam sales. And they happen like four times a year? No, there's an awesome sale, winter sale, summer sale. Is there a spring sale? I feel like they do a lot of sales now. Often a game comes out on the Nintendo Switch and it's just like, oh wow, finally a port came to the Switch. But at the expense of, you know, it took them a little while to make the port and they have to pay the company that did it and there's publishing deals that have to be reworked. And as a result, sometimes, I say, I say sometimes, often the price is more expensive on the Switch for the same game. It's a different experience because you're playing it on a polished console known as the Nintendo Switch. But the Steam Deck, you know, it just takes a library that most people have been building up for years. If you're just getting into Steam to start with now, then look forward to it because it's a very rewarding experience. The games are really, really cheap and every, like four times a year, you get the opportunity to buy really cheap games. And many of them work. Now, here's the other thing about the console not being polished. It's, it's like if you sold a PlayStation 5 to someone and on the shelf there's like 100 PS5 games, but 40 of those games don't run on the PS5. Even though they say PS5 on the box, that's kind of what the experience is. Games don't actually say, yes, we work on the Steam Deck and then they don't work on the Steam Deck. They say they work on Steam, the question is, do they work on the Steam Deck? And the thing is, on a Nintendo Switch, every game in the Nintendo Switch library, every game that says Switch on the box, 
works on the Nintendo Switch. Steam, it's like there's this weird distinction between is it a Steam game, is it a Steam Deck verified game, and for the new user, let's say you're a parent buying it for your child, or if you're just a young adult buying it for yourself, for, or for kids, if they're just buying it for themselves, it's confusing. It's like, but I bought the Steam Deck and you're telling me this game doesn't work? I was really excited about playing, let's say, Tekken on my Steam Deck, and it's like, yeah, it works. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Or Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, or Dragon Ball Fighters. Actually, that's a better example, because Tekken, I think, does work. Grand Blue Fantasy Versus actually does work with the right version of Proton. But Dragon Ball Fighters, no matter what mode I put it in, it just doesn't work. And as I understand it, the reason is because it uses something called Easy Anti-Cheat, which only runs on Windows PCs. I guess it's just not quite built to work on Linux through Proton yet. So it's awkward because Dragon Ball Fighters, a very impressive looking game, does work on the Nintendo Switch. Whereas on the Steam Deck, you can sometimes play games like Grand Blue Fantasy, which don't exist on the Switch. So you have to really pick and choose like, which games do I want to play and where is the best place to play them? Obviously, if you have, if you have the money, you, like, you ideally you just buy both. You just buy a Switch and a Steam Deck, but that doesn't change the fact that you have to carry them both around with you when you go places and it's it's bulky and the Steam Deck is really bulky. I think carrying two Nintendo Switches in my bag wouldn't be a problem, but carrying a Nintendo Switch and my Steam Deck, well, carrying anything and a Steam Deck in your bag, it's kind of like difficult. But I'm making it sound like it's been a negative experience that the Steam Deck doesn't run certain games or that it's bulky. It's quite the contrary. I'm saying all these things that are like potential downsides compared to the Nintendo Switch, but on the off, on the other hand, Steam Deck does run tons of games that aren't that don't exist on the Nintendo Switch. And they've got their own store on Linux where you can download like emulators. I actually don't have any emulators, but I know that it's possible. And so, the ability to run so much stuff that just can't run on the Nintendo Switch will never run on the Nintendo Switch, or is unlikely to run on the Nintendo Switch, is awesome. Plus. A large number of games just can't run with what's known as rollback netcode. It costs you a bit more CPU power to run rollback netcode, so a lot of the games say, hey, we're putting rollback netcode into our game, but not on the Nintendo Switch. So it kind of sucks, it's kind of like second class citizen syndrome on the Nintendo Switch when it comes to netcode. But on the Steam Deck, I plug in my Ethernet cable, I have got rollback netcode running on a game that doesn't even exist on the Nintendo Switch, and that is a luxurious feeling indeed. And that's really what it is for the Steam Deck. It's not so much that it's just a good experience or it's a well-polished experience. Really what it is, is that the Steam Deck just allows stuff that isn't possible elsewhere. And that's how you end up in with early adopter syndrome. You're buying that console, that camera, that drone. Let me just make sure that I exit on the right zone here. I want to be in the correct ETC zone. I love this feature, being able to just drive up to the barrier slowly, just kind of coast for a minute, and then ping pong, you are through. And you get through on the other side and it feels like the start of a horse race. I'm not racing, but because all the cars are like going from side by side to getting into a line and trying to all join the same racing line, it does feel a bit like a horse race. So. Coming up to Tokyo Game Show now, and I'm quite excited about checking it out after having not been since 2019. I really want to check out the Steam Deck booth. I know that they really want Steam Deck to work in Korea, Japan, and all the countries that they've expanded to recently. And I've seen on Twitter that they've got some like 3D printed, I say 3D printed, they've, they've printed out these monolithic Steam Deck grips that are going to be part of their booth. So I'm looking forward to checking that out, but also just because I'm a massive Steam Deck fan. I think it's such a cool console, but it's not the kind of console I would recommend to like, not, I don't want to say anyone, it's not the type of console I would recommend to someone who's not a gamer. Like if you don't consider yourself a gamer and use that word quite confidently, I'm a gamer, then I don't think the Steam Deck is for you. And definitely if you're buying something for your kids and they don't know a lot about technology themselves and they don't know how to work out technical problems themselves, Steam Deck is not a recommended purchase in my opinion. But if you are interested in 
tinkering around and seeing what's possible and you know, I can play a game that doesn't even exist on the Nintendo Switch as long as I use Proton GE version 7.32. That is where the joy of the Steam Deck is. It's like, wow, you can't do this elsewhere. And it's awesome. I actually made a video about the D-pad on the Steam Deck and it's, it sounds kind of negative when you watch the video, but the truth is the D-pad on the Steam Deck is already significantly nicer than the D-pad that you get on most third-party controllers. So it's a shame that I'm so critical in the video, but actually the truth is the D-pad on the Steam Deck is better than most. It's just, I feel like if you can't remove the D-pad that, like you can on a Nintendo Switch, then I want the D-pad to be more polished. It's like, it's just almost there, but not quite there. And so because it's not quite there, it's like, well, what's the point? You know, why, why practice training your combos on the D-pad on a Steam Deck if it's not going to translate to the way that you use your D-pad on your actual normal pad controller. That's the International Convention Hall, that's where we, and that's the entrance I used to get to the Street Fighter, Street Fighter 5 event. Actually, I need to be in the right side, so I'm just going to pull in behind this chap here. And I've just heard the sound of my GoPro switch off, which means now we're solely on face cam. <laughs> I guess the GoPro has just overheated. Let's find an empty space. Man, look at these cars. Maserati 86 over there. All right, we're going to park the car here. And I, unfortunately, it's not next to like a really expensive car. I don't like parking next to expensive cars. So I should, I should count my car as an expensive car. It was expensive in the day. That's not true. X, MX-5 is a very affordable car. Oh yeah, perfect. Just for the fun of it, Let's open up the roof, shall we? Oh, right. This is what I wanted to do. And that camera's actually switched off, so they're, they're taking turns. Listen, that's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed this. I will see you all in the next one. I'm looking forward to some Tokyo Game Show. I'm going to check out Steam Deck stuff. Don't forget to comment, subscribe to the channel, and like the video. See you all next time.